For those who prefer Linux or are simply curious about Linux and other open source technologies, this is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to episode number 294 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, the 7th of May. May. Eric Kid Day. 2013. <laughs> Eric Kid Day! Yay! Happy, Happy birthday. Happy birthday to Eric Kid. I really hope that he's uh, having a great time tonight. No doubt. Not as Getting good as we are. Getting lots of weapons. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably just sitting at home watching this watching. With popcorn. I wish I was there is what he's thinking. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry, Eric. My turn. Yeah, uh, but happy birthday to Eric, kid. Uh, did you hear Debian 7 came out stable this week? Really, really excited about that. It's been a long time coming. We've been running squeeze for quite some time. Uh, so that's a big thing. Huge. Other big things uh-huh. coming up in the newsroom. What is it? Warner Brothers is being sued for using characters they don't own in their game series Scribble Knots. Oh. Yes. The U.S. military has approved Android phones for their soldiers. Super cool, because I just got one myself. Um, Uh, Not a soldier. A soldier. Not a soldier, an Android phone. (laughs) Well then. (laughs) Whoa. That's cool. He's going to be so Um, pleased. (laughs) And also. Also in the news. A new bill could see Dutch investigators allowed to hack systems in the fight against cybercrime. Huh. Also, the world's first 3D printing pen screamed past its 30,000 Kickstarter goal by raising $2.3 million. What? Million dollars. Could you imagine? <sighs> we need $30,000 to start this thing? Here, have Here. a couple million. Yeah, here's two, awesome. almost two and a half mil. More about... Sweet. Yeah, it's so cool. Mm-hmm. More about that. Stick around. These stories are coming up later in the show. What's with the shirt? Um, we got to ask, This right? is my super fabulous shirt. Tonight's show is brought to you in part by AdZerk.com, the next generation of ad serving. If you've got a website, why not monetize it? AdZerk will help the world's fastest asynchronous banner ad code. AdZerk.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had that totally memorized. Absolutely. <laughs> JavaScript code, is, it, when it's asynchronous, it's like super screaming fast. So you see the advertisements on Category 5. They're non-intrusive. They're instantly loading. Very, very zippy. And there's no delay to load the page. That's what's important when it comes to ad serving. Because if you want to be serving up ads to your website visitors, you don't want them to take any time. Because then they're never going right. to see them or click on them. Right? So... That That's where sense. AdZerk comes in and does a really, really fantastic job. Also, make sure you check out our mobile website, m.cat5.tv. Scan that QR code or visit the website on your mobile device. We have Category 5 Technology Radio added to the uh, mobile site uh, over the past couple of weeks. And we're up and on the air tonight. Fabulous. People uh, in the chat room jot saying, there's no sound on. It was before the show started. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't the have radio our radio doesn't work. Yeah, the, the, the microphones weren't need to on be on, yet. plugged in, started yeah. up. That's you know. kind of a necessary detail um, before Sorry. the show. But then, as soon as the show started, they're like, "Oh, look, radio <laughs> suddenly is working." <laughs> Along with video. Oh, and now I have sound. That's fantastic. So, so strange. We're gonna get the the hang of how uh, that whole thing comes together at seven o'clock every Tuesday night. Uh, we're gonna get that. So. But, but yes. we do we do throw people off because after the show, 
we shut off the microphones, we shut off the cameras, and then we move over to Google Hangouts. We're there right now. You can go to cat5.tv slash gplus, and you can get into our Hangout. You can goof around with other viewers during the show, uh, make sound effects, whatever you want to do. <laughs> then after the show, we're going to be joining you, and we can chat, we can hang out, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about after the show. Um, even talk to us about some of the things that we talk about on the show tonight. So Very cool. That's cool. I think so. Google Hangout. Okay. Ooh. Category 5, sorry. <laughs> Category 5 is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. And the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Excellent. We love some of the stuff that we're doing with the Tech Podcast Network and IAIB. Uh, I want to make mention as well, we've got lots of new viewers who are joining us tonight. Uh, maybe you can help me through the list, but uh, lots of people registering on our website. I want to also bring up our viewer location map maybe while you're Super. reading through the list. Okay. Yeah. So our new registered viewers is Zyron Shadow. Hey, yeah. Quacks Jibbles. Very cool. Oh, they're fancy Quark names. Quacks Jibbles. Leroy. Hey, Leroy. Uh, Den Norman 53. Hey. Den Norman. Den. Den, Den Norman. Norman. Den Norman 53. 53. And Ol Fagan. All right. Beautiful. Good to have you all joining us tonight. And something yeah. that we're really, really excited about this week. I don't know if you've been watching our viewer location map on the website. Well, this, this is our viewership um, right now. But what, what is really different over the past couple of weeks is what's happening over in India. And really, really excited that the west coast of India is becoming uh, one of our <sighs> heavy viewership areas. Before, you know, India, we, we, we saw you watching the show. We know that, you know, that people have been tuning in from all over the world. Uh, and there's been, you know, one or two, maybe three or four nodes that pop up once in a while. But keeping but in mind, yeah, each one of those pins on the map can represent up to 500 people or so. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you keep... You know, you consider even just looking at that, it's it's pretty amazing how how much the growth has has been uh, hitting the coast in India and, and all around as well. I see Bangladesh and Pakistan. Um, of course, we're seeing uh, a continued growth in China. Wow. Nobody in Mongolia. If you have friends in Mongolia, please call them up. Yeah, just give them a call and just say, hey, there's this really <gasps> cool show from Canada, Moscow and, <laughs> and right. Russia. Lithuania Russia. has a couple. That's yeah. good. That's where my parents are from. So oh, yeah? Yeah. Very cool. Well, yeah, I see some people. My parents' in parents. Uh, Lithuania. L Vilnius. Lithuania. It's hard for me to say it. Lithuania. But, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ukraine as well. I can't even see Germany or the UK. Very, very you know, saturated with, there we go, Netherlands as well. All Beautiful. the way across the... Lots in China too. Europe. Yeah. That's good. So just a, a shout out to all of our new viewers. Absolutely. And, and so thrilled to see the growth. Um, across Europe, across India, and and just everywhere in between, and uh, that's not to um, not to leave out everybody in North America either, because North America is pretty well saturated. I think at this point, that's how things are looking. We love having you here as well. Look at that! Wow. But uh, yeah, kind of thrilling to see. Uh, such a growth of the show. If you're watching and you haven't yet registered on our website, go to category5.tv and you can click on the login register link up at the top of the web website. And that uh, gives us a chance to know that you're watching and where you're from and, and uh, to give a, a greets and also mm -hmm. to notify you before the show each week just so that you know that it's, that it's coming. And after the show, we can send you an email with the links to be able to download it if you want to be able to watch it after the fact. Uh, all that stuff is available for you free of charge. So... Cool. Excellent. Nice to see everybody. It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you go, I, Len, I think, you think that oh, I'm going to say something? She's going to say something, so inside I need to Inside my shush. head. I'm thinking inside my head. Okay. It is nice to see everybody. It really is. All right, <laughs> so we've got to take a really, really quick break tonight. Um, Sasha, you and I, uh, we were talking before the show and uh, excited about the, the continuing our series on the basics of internet usage. And this is a perfect series for people who are just learning how to use the internet. Is it you? You're just I'm getting a, away I am that? feeling very basic when yeah. I sit beside you, right. to be honest. Oh, okay. but I, Sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. It's All only right. because I am very <laughs> much the... <laughs> As if. <laughs> I am very much the... Um, like the typical just no Google, just no. Well, we're going to actually be taking a real hard look at Google tonight. 
Um, so stick around. Don't go anywhere. We're going to learn all about how that's done. If you've got grandparents, parents who are just you know fumbling their way around the internet, this is really perfect for them. Uh, don't tell them I said that. But just stick around, and I'm sure that uh, <laughs> turn the volume up real something. loud. Yeah. yeah. Just hey, mom, come in here. Come check this out. This guy's talking to you. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back after this. Don't go anywhere. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com this is Category 5 Technology TV. Great to have you here. Please join our website, Category5.tv. Get into the chat room tonight. It's Category 5 on Freenode or right on our website. You'll see all the uh, information about how to get into our chat room. If you click on the Interact menu, you'll see it there. Yes. You'll be part of a lot of interesting conversation about correctly how to say Netherlands. Are they making fun of me? The Netherlands. The. Uh, the. The. Right. the Netherlands. Welcome yep. to the Canada. <laughs> is it the same thing? Not really. To the Great White North. Yes. Cool. Except that it's cool, 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 very cool, cool, cool. nice here right now. Yes. <laughs> it really is. It's not white at all. It is no. very I hot am and almost balmy. ready to take my snow tires off. You haven't done that yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I just I want to be cut unaware. I know that it's Canada, but I think <laughs> we're done with the snow for the year. I just don't want to be at that least person. In Ontario, right? At least in Ontario. Yeah. Following it, all the flooding that we've seen and, and all could that. Be a flash freeze. Yeah. The only month in it's Canada. It's like 35 degrees out right now. <laughs> Celsius. It's it's th- 32? Two. Two degrees what? this weekend in the forecast. Is, I am not Heather wrong. Heather is keep, bringing us bad news here in the studio. I am not wrong. She's supporting me. I'm keeping my snow tires on. Two until degrees I'm this certain. weekend? It is 35 today. <laughs> yep. You ever been on one of those roller coasters? That's kind of what it feels like. Yeah, it's been a little bit wacky that way, but there's no snow on the ground anyway. Yep. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yet. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Goodness so. me. So get your get your son in now. Get up, upstairs and outside. <laughs> I'll be the really, get really a, tanned guy. I've been out the at the snow. barbecue practically every single night. This weekend was fantastic. Just blue skies and hot and gorgeous. So we're out in the backyard. We got a dog. So, you know, the, the Ferguson Zoo is practically complete with the birds and the fish and the cat and the dog <laughs> and the free kids. Don't forget the three kids. That's a lot of beings in one building. Yeah. I, yeah. So. I myself have myself. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we were out in the back with the dog running around and just really, really nice. And so. Good. Excellent. Good weather. Nice. Yeah. And next weekend, snowball fight. Fantastic. Not liking the sound of that. Okay, we're going to move on because I'm getting angry about this Canadian <laughs> weather. You know what I'm saying? All right. You could Google it and see what happens. Let's talk about Google. Okay. It's so funny you should mention Google because that's a perfect segue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tonight we're looking at how to use the internet as a basic novice kind of internet user. We've, perhaps you're just learning your way around the computer. Maybe you've, been, maybe you've had a computer for a long time. A lot of times I think these days what happens is you get put at a computer in your office Mm -hmm. and you learn to use the computer for what you do in your office and then you go home and you're not sure where things are how to do it because it's not the same as the computer at the office or the programs are different or what you're doing is completely different from what it is that you do when you're at work so Tonight, this is for you, if that's you, if you are just learning your way around the internet, perhaps you uh, you might be a senior who is learning to use a computer. Uh, you know, it's not part of your generation. It's not something that you grew up with. And it's amazing, the kids coming up these days that just basically seem to have a natural affinity for just operating these machines. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're here to help you to understand how, how to actually get the most out of it. Um, and, and that's kind of what the show is here for. So tonight uh, we're looking at uh, Google in particular and, and just how Google itself, the search engine, has really become a go-to resource on the Internet. I, I can attest it answers all of my questions. All of your I th- questions. Anything. Anybody asks me anything. If I can't fake knowing it already, I just ask Google. It's amazing. Dear Google. 
<laughs> and, I, and my phone now, I can just talk into my phone and it just searches Google without me having to type anything. Yeah. So. And Google as a search engine, I mean, some people are against the whole, you know, massive business and, and the fact that they, you know, they practically know everything about everybody, but that's not really what we're looking at tonight. But the fact is, it's a really, really solid service and the, and the things that they do are amazing. And, and the things that you're able to pull from understanding how Google works is, is really cool. But we're really looking at the basics tonight. So in order to get there, we're going to go to Google. If you've never done this before, we're going to Hello, use, welcome to Earth. Mm, well, we, yeah, really. <laughs> Up in the, uh, uh, in the top, we remember this from the last time. Just a quick refresher. This is called the address bar up here. And no matter where you are on the internet, you can always change that address. Right now we're on www.category5.tv. Let's change that to google.com. I'm going to go google.com, and you'll notice it automatically detects that I'm in Canada, so it switches to .ca to give me the appropriate content for my country. So this is basically Google, and you can see it's really, really simple. It's not cluttered like some of the other search engines. I'll use Yahoo as an example. Um, it, it just There's okay. nothing here that is really overwhelming, right? Although on particular special occasions and special days and holidays, they, they will yeah. change the, the Google, Google Doodle. Yes, and sometimes they're interactive. Google yes. has been Pac-Man before. Yeah. Just talking about the logo, sometimes you know, it, it gets you know a little bit fun, yeah. um, but don't let that phase you. It's always, as far as the functionality goes, oh, yeah. it's always the same. You've got this area down here in the and middle. This is called the, the search bar or the search field. So this is where you type in your search queries. And then you've got a small little menu up at the top here where you can go search, images, maps, play, YouTube, etc. We're going to look at a few of those tonight just to help you get started. So one of the things that we need to understand when we're using the internet as new computer users is what a link looks like. And, and sometimes, you know, these links don't actually have any kind of um, buttons or, or look to being links. But you'll see as I mouse over, they actually change uh, color a little bit. They go a little bit more white. And although you can't see my cursor, if you actually do that, if you go to google.com and hover over any of those links, you'll see that your, your arrow for your mouse, in fact, turns into like a little hand that looks like it's pointing. And that's telling you that, okay, now you're moving your mouse around. It's like a little arrow. But when you point to a link, it actually turns into a hand. And you see that hand pointing to the link. So that means you can click on it, and it's going to do something. So in this case, if I click on images up at the top, for example, it's actually going to switch me to a Google Images search. If you look, the logo has changed slightly. So it now says Google Images. If I go just standard search, it just says Google Canada in my case, or it might say uh, Google um, wherever you're located. The Netherlands. The Netherlands. <laughs> good, good example. Really nice example there. Thank you. How does that fit in the logo? See, <laughs> that's a problem. Google Netherlands just fits a little bit better, it, but yeah. I understand that we want to get it right. Okay, so first thing that we need to understand about about using Google, of course, now we, we understand how to click links and move around. We know that this is the search field, and we've all, you know, we've probably all used a search engine before, but differentiating that from the address bar up at the top. So when you have an address, we've talked about this before, where, you know, if you have www.category5.tv, we don't type that in down there. We, we type that in up at the address bar up at the top. Mm -hmm. But if we're doing a search, on the other hand, that's when we put it into the search field. And you see how it actually started moving around. I'm going to do a quick search for Patrick Stewart. Sir Patrick Stewart, I should say. So we're going to pretend that, okay, well, we're searching for one of our favorite actors. And he is a very famous actor and what a charming he fellow. He played uh, Captain Jean-Luc Picard <laughs> in Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> he plays um, Professor Xavius, I think he, he calls him. Is that right? Xavier? That, Xavier. That's right. Xavier. In X-Men. Thank you for correcting me on that. I was worried about that I wouldn't get it right. Uh, but he's, he's a famous actor anyways and, and somebody that we can easily pull up on, on the Internet. So I've done a quick search just to show you what a search does. And you'll see that there are pictures over on the right-hand side of Google and there's some other things over on the left. And w let's say what we actually want to do is we want to find a picture of Patrick Stewart. We're big fans. We want to. We want to print it out. We got a photo printer. We want to print it out and make it and our mouse make pad. A little, make it a mouse pad. Perfect. Made of paper. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, I don't do, we'll just use the fiction of a mouse pad. Okay. So you'll see that now that I've searched for Patrick Stewart in Google, 
I've got things like Wikipedia, and if I click on it, you know, there's oh. information about him. There is a picture of him and things Looking like that. a little bit old. He is. He's getting on, yeah. Oh, yeah. He looks great for his age, though. What is it? Born uh, July 13th, 1940. 1940, yeah. So, Yikes. and, you know, there's, <laughs> these are more results. But what I want is a picture. So you'll notice that Google up at the top has images. So I can click either here or up here. Notice that they're both links. Okay. So I'm going to click on the one at the top, and you'll see that now I've done a search in images for Patrick Stewart. So I've got all these pictures of him. So if we say that we're going to pick this one here with him holding his award, there's a couple things with the image. You see at the bottom now that I moused over it, it says 220 by 275. So that tells us that it's a very, very small picture. It's not going to print very well at all. So what we can do with Google Images is we can click on that. It gives us a slightly larger version, but now we can go into more info. You see it's 220 by 275, and that's not sufficient for printing, okay? So now you see just under the picture, now that we've clicked on more info, it says find other sizes of this image. So we wanna get the large one because we wanna print it, say. So we click on large and you'll see that this version of the picture here is actually 2,900 pixels wide. And just understanding quality-wise, the higher that number is, the better quality the picture I is going to print. Okay. So now if I bring that up, it's actually a very high-quality photograph. You can see that that's really crystal clear and, and high enough resolution that if I print that, it's going to turn out really, really well. So suddenly Google Images, which is that images link on Google, allows us to search for actors or you know recipes and uh, things like that and, and right. find pictures and be able to uh, actually print those out or use them for uh, personal use. You don't want to repost them or anything because you don't have the rights to, to use them legally, but for f just to demonstrate the, the actual ability to find pictures. Just to clarify, both of those mm -hmm. images links were the same. They would take you to the same place. When like the small one versus the big one? Yes. No, they, it, what it actually does is Google is able to look at a picture and it does w uh, basically a reverse image search, which is getting a little bit technical and we don't need to understand the terminology, but it sees that little 200 pixel image uh -huh. and I've said, okay, I like this picture, I want one that's bigger and it goes through its database and says, okay, I've got other versions of this oh, same nice. picture. It's really, really smart. So you can find pictures and then view, find the biggest version that Google knows about so that you can print it and blow it up and, and things like that. Uh, you're very welcome, Dave Maydu. And we're just using Patrick Stewart as the example. This could be anything. I mean, it could be a, a picture of your favorite car if you're into classic cars, or it could be anything at all. Um, sometimes what I'll do is if I'm looking for a logo and I want to use it for whatever, you know, it might be something that we're sponsoring or something, we need a logo. We only have a little tiny one that they've sent us, so we go into Google and we search for it, and we do a, a reverse image search for the larger sized image, and all of a sudden it is available nice. to us. There's another really neat way to do this, and this is, again, getting a little bit more complex, but I'm going to go back into Google again in a different tab. I'm going to go into Google Images, and you'll see now, uh, the other way I can do it is I can actually hold in the image on my other window, and this image could be from any website, and I'm pointed to the tab up at the top and then I can drag it to where it says drop image here and it will actually do a reverse image search on my no image way. and then again I'm presented <laughs> with the ability to go all sizes small medium large etc and it tells me all about the image and there we are back at the same place that is awesome so there's a bunch of different ways that you can use images to to really and when I say images google images to to find what you're looking for for whatever purpose Okay, so then, you know, we're thinking about our favorite actor, Patrick Stewart, and you'll see that there's one of the options here is IMDB, but sometimes, because it's an actor, I might do something like Patrick Stewart, IMDB, enter, and you'll see that the first item that comes up is Patrick Stewart on IMDB. This is a neat what way for you to, internet movie database. Oh, okay. And this gives you all the information about the actor, what shows he's been in, what movies, uh, I brought this up a little bit earlier from one of the mouse clicks, um, all the different things that he's done. So this is a really neat way to cross-reference. So if you're not sure, let's say you knew, oh, he was in that movie with the guy with the claws. I can't remember. He's like Wolfman, oh, I don't Wolfman know. Whoa, or something. Whoa. I think he played like Jean Valjean. <laughs> I can't really figure it out who was that actor, 
right? Right. Here's what's cool. So I've now found Patrick Stewart on IMDb because I know who Patrick Stewart is, and I realize that he's with Wolfman Jean Valjean, <laughs> but I can't remember the name of the movie. So I can go actually go through this list, and I can see, oh, there's the Wolfman, right? And I can see that, oh, there it is, and I click on the, oh, there it is. Okay, so. And then I can go down into the movie and I can see the list of oh. the actors that are in that movie. And I can see, oh, Hugh Jackman. Or Hugh Jackman, I guess he pronounces yeah. it. <laughs> Jackman. Jackman. I'm still thinking Pac-Man. Hugh, the Jackman. And then I see, oh, there he is as Jean Valjean. Oh, yes. You know? In Les Miserables. So now all of a sudden we've got this connection between Patrick Stewart, X-Men, Jean Valjean, and Hugh Jean Jackman. Jean Valjean was in Les Mis. Les Miserables. So na- oh. then I can say, okay, well now, okay, we know who he played in Les Miserables, uh, okay. Jean Valjean. I can go to Les Miserables, and I can find out more information about that. And, right. it, and now I've got all the information that I ever wanted about Hugh Jackman, the actor who played him, all from a very simple search for Patrick Stewart space IMDB. Right? Similar- so what I've done there is I've said I, I, I want... Patrick Stewart, but I want it to be from the Internet Movie Database. That's the first result that I want to see. I might uh, instead I might put Wikipedia there, and I might find some information from Wikipedia, which is basically take that the old encyclopedias and put them online, and that is basically what Wikipedia becomes. It's like an electronic um, encyclopedia, uh, Wikipedia, right. and and what a Wikipedia is as far as what's different about that versus an encyclopedia is encyclopedias were printed. So they had to be edited and printed professionally and then made available. And by the time they were in everyone's hands, they might have become obsolete or there, some of the information was incorrect. Mm-hmm. With Wikipedia, people are constantly editing it because it's online. So you never have to worry about, you know, well, I mean, you within, have to reason, worry about- within reason, but information can never stay obsolete for long. Right. So, you know, if something happens and and something has changed, you know, World Trade Center towers or something, like you go into an old Encyclopedia Britannica and the information is going to be completely incorrect versus right. Wikipedia will explain everything that went on following that and everything that, you know, so every it's it's a little bit more right. up to date. Beware obviously. though that Very not bad. all the information on Wikipedia is in fact correct. It's the internet. Yeah. I saw yeah. it on the internet. It's got to be true. <laughs> yeah, we got to be wise about that. Yeah. Okay, so we know how to find our favorite actors and things like that. Now we've got to be a little bit more productive, and, and we're thinking, okay, well, we're, we're at home, and uh, I want to find a company, a local company. Okay? okay. This is where the address bar and the search engine... Now, we've looked at... The last time you were when we talked about Internet Basics, we talked about the address bar and understanding where do you put the www dot... It goes in the address bar at the very top. Now we're doing the opposite. We're saying, okay, well, here's how we can find the addresses. We're going to use search this time. So there's a local company, uh, don't tell me, that roasts their own coffee here in Barrie, and they make the best coffee. It's fantastic. You can go there. You can get them to fresh grind it for you. You walk in, and you're just wafted with this amazing smell of fresh, roasted, organic, whole bean, fair trade coffee. It's awesome, okay? But I can't for the life of me think of what the company is. Maybe I just heard about it, or maybe I was told that there's this company that roasts their own coffee. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just simply go into Google, and I'm going to say coffee roasted in berry. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I know that I've heard the name, so I know it's not coffee wholesalers on yellow pages. Uh, okay, coffee roasting, green beanery. Oh, there it is. Hamley Tea and Coffee Co. Okay, so now I know the company, but I see that this is actually shopberry.com, and that's fine, but that's going to take me to some other website. It's not taking me to Hamley Tea and Coffee Company's website. It's taking me to shopberry.com. But see, that that's good, because now, what have I done? I've learned... Oh, yeah, the name of the company is called Hamley's. Right. Right. So now I can use that. So I'm using, I'm learning to use keywords, which is coffee roasting in berry or coffee company, or the roast, co- what did I search for? Coffee roasted in, in berry. berry. That's right. As simple as that. But now I know it's called Hamley's or Hamley. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna go back up to my search here. Haha, <laughs> now I know who they are. Hamley's Coffee Berry. First result, Hamley's Tea and Coffee.com. So I didn't know their .com. But by utilizing Google and keywords and just being uh, clever with the way that I'm searching, I'm able to find it. I've got their address, and here we go. I can click on their website, and I can see, wow. There they are. At Hamley's, we give our customers a look through our window into the wonderful world of tea and coffee. That's what they look through their window at? That's it? On Manette's point? That's Barry. Beautiful. (laughs) No, not really. Welcome to Barry. But, okay, so then you see the links at the left, and you see how things change when you mouse over them, and my cursor does turn to the hand. I can go to coffee, and I can figure everything out that way. But I want to know things like their hours of operation. So we've already learned how to click around on a website by pointing and and clicking our mouse. Most likely, I'm going to click on Contact Us, and I see that they're open today until 6 o'clock p.m. So I missed them today, but they're open again tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. So I can hop on over there and get myself a beautiful fresh roasted cup of coffee. There's the roasting machine, too, if you ever wondered. Nice. There it is. So that's where that beautiful aroma comes from. So that's really quite incredible because now I've been able to find exactly the company that I was looking for without really knowing who they were, Mm -hmm. where exactly they were located. Now I have all that information. Would that I'm feeling lucky? You know when you're searching mm-hmm. and it says Google search and then I'm feeling lucky? Yeah. Would that bring up... What is? I don't actually... I've never actually... Sure. Clicked. That's well, a real legit question. Yeah, let's give it a go. <laughs> so what I'm feeling lucky means is that Google is going to take a guess at what you're probably searching for. So here's where I'm feeling lucky, which is this button down here, is going to fall short, is with the search query for cough... Oh, and it skipped me up here. There we go. Coffee, roasted, and berry. Now, if I click on... Now, I'm on Google Live. Look at that. So I don't have an I'm feeling lucky. But what I'm feeling lucky will do is it will actually take you to the first option. So it would take me to that. However, because I know the name is now Hamley's, if I clicked on I'm feeling lucky and it was available to me, it would take me with that search query to the Hamley's website because it is the first result in Google. So that is definitely what I'm looking for. Okay. Cool. So it just cuts down your... It just brings you to the one. If you know exactly what you're looking for, it takes you right to the website. If nice. you type in Category 5 TV, you can click I'm Feeling Lucky, and it will take you right to our site. Beautiful. Without too. ever having to go through the hoops, yeah. Super. All right, so the next kind of awesome thing about Google and, and some of the services that they offer is Maps. Google Maps makes it so incredible and easy to find local companies. We're going to use a couple of examples. Let's say I'm looking for Canadian Tire, a popular company that, you know, I need to, it's more than just tires, folks. So it might be, you know, I might need to get a bike or bikes have tires. So that's a bad example. A coffee maker. (laughs) A tent. A tent. A boat. Kayak or canoe or something like that. Yeah. Uh, What else can we get at Canadian Tire? I bought my vacuum cleaner there. You could buy a lawnmower there. A lawnmower. A barbecue. Summer tires. Summer tires. That's (laughs) tires. That doesn't, that goes against the grain of they're more than just tires. We know they have tires. They have their own, they have their own currency. They do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, So (laughs) if I'm looking for information about Canadian Tire, I want to find out where they're located. I can just simply go into maps. Notice I've clicked on maps up at the top of Google again. Okay, we've got search, images, maps. Up there, I'm going to simply type Canadian Tire Berry and hit enter. And you'll see that what happens on the map is that I get pins for each of the Canadian Tire locations. So if I click on one of those pins, I can see, oh, there's one up on Bayfield Street. And it has a picture of that location. It has their phone number if I want to call and get hours of operation, anything like that. Now I see that there, is, there are also some other listings. One of them is simply a gas bar that carries the Canadian Tire brand. And then, of course, we've got the South End Canadian Tire on Maple View as well. So, and it's the same picture, so I guess it's not actually a picture of that particular location necessarily. So again, it gives you the phone number, and then you can give them a call and, and get information about them. So if you want driving directions, now you can click on Directions. And over here, I can put in my address. Let's say I'm coming from Aurelia, Ontario, wherever you're coming from. You can get as precise as your street address, and it will give you step-by-step driving directions. Head northeast on Mississauga Street, 
Take the first left onto West Street North. Not always entirely accurate, but it gives you a good way, a good uh, overview of how to get to Canadian Tire on Maple View and Barrie from wherever you are. And then it actually puts a pin on the map where your destination is going to, to be. So that's one thing, but wh where Google Maps search gets really exciting is when you don't know what you're looking for. Sure, if I knew I was looking for Hamley's Coffee Co., I know that I can go to their website and I can search for specifically their name, but what if I didn't know? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, but here we are doing it with maps. So where I had said coffee roasted in berry, right. now how can we use that Google's ability to work with keywords to in fact work with maps? Huh? So let's give them a test. Great question. Let's say we're here on maps and we're looking for, um, I'm really craving pizza tonight. So do I search for Pizza Hut or Pizza Pizza or Dino's Two for One? What do or I do? Pie. Pie Pizza. Pie. Just pie. Pie. Have you been there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's a great place. <laughs> We're just full of the awesome <laughs> local endorsements tonight. Go to Pie. Go to Explore. Pie Two. New. Well, I new haven't been location. to Pie Two. Yeah. Second location. Second location. That's wild. Walking distance from my job. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. I know. Nice. Delicious. Okay. Fire, wood roasted, wood So should, fired. We pretend, should we pretend that? Okay. It yeah. sounds to me <laughs> like pie has mystically become our destination. So let's see if it works. Let's see how well Google works. I'm going to simply type in pizza. Enter. I've typed in pizza. Now you notice I didn't put pizza berry. I just put pizza. Well, how did it do that? Google has this amazing thing called eerie abilities. Eerie? No. Abilities. <laughs> it's Creepy. called geolocation. They, they know es essentially approximately where you're located. Who you are. They're not putting a pin right there. You, you know, are. when we do our viewer location map, the pin is not on everyone's rooftop. It's based on the IP address of your computer. Everybody connects to the internet through their internet service provider, and the internet service provider says, oh, they're in Barrie. It's, as, it's almost as generic as that. Mm -hmm. So now Google takes that information and says, oh, they're looking for pizza. They're probably looking for pizza in Barrie. If you do that search, wherever you're located, you're going to find that pizza places for your town come up. So now you see a whole bunch of dots and a whole bunch of things over there. I can actually scroll through the list. I know that I'm looking for a specific place. And I can go through. There's four pages of it. Or I can, in fact, use my scroll wheel on the mouse. That's the, uh, let's see if I can show you here, this little thing here. This rolling thing allows you to actually zoom in and out on, on the on the actual map right. so I can zoom in and if I click on one I'll see the name of the company I can see more information about the company possibly a picture right and as I click around I can see all about these different pizza places so let's see here let's go to the south end of Barrie click on F there and you'll see there oh. is pie wood pie. fire pizza joint so delicious so if you'd like, you can, again, pick up the phone, give them a call, order your pizza, or go to their website by clicking on the link, and that will actually, you know, that will bring up their website. Um, and you can also, again, get directions, things like that. There's their website loading in the background here. Their site seems a little bit slow tonight. It's probably because a it's lot It's so of, busy all of a sudden. A everybody people, in India now okay, is... Everybody, yeah. <laughs> India is basically going there and saying, what is this pie wood-fired pizza joint in the berry? <laughs> so that's essentially... I mean, that's you can actually use keywords on a map I in order to find stuff. So gone are the days where you had to pull out this big old piece of paper and hope to find something or uh, drive around town trying to find a laundromat or you know whatever <laughs> else you need a chiropractor you need whatever it doesn't matter you can just type it in as a search in google and lo and behold you're going to find your way uh where you're going so i i actually did not know that so no super happy i'm here for this show want to see one last cool thing <laughs> yes one Do of the things, when, whenever I've discovered a new place, so, you know, and we did this when we moved in September uh, into our new house, is, well, where do we go for pizza now? Where do we go for Chinese food? Because all of the places are different because we've moved. So one of the things I like to be able to do is to put myself in the position of, okay, well, I, I can't really get an idea from this topographical map what this looks like, right? So I can actually... So I can click on Piewood Pizza, and you'll see this little link 
underneath the picture that says Street View. If I click that, here's something that's really interesting. I can actually see Piewood Pizza. Again, I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse. There is the actual restaurant. And I can use my mouse to look around. I can see the street and I can go, oh yeah, I've been on this street. I know exactly where I am. And I can, in fact, follow the cars and I can use these arrows down at the bottom to move myself through the street. And I can actually see the approach and, and how I'm going to make this trip. And I've used this. There's the sign. So I know that I need to watch for that sign right. as I'm coming up on Piewood Fire. So if you're Pizza. one of those visual people that aren't good with directions, you can yeah. say. Or you don't want to, or uh, you know what I've done is I've printed the map, but I visually do this in order to know what I'm looking for. So mm -hmm. I know I recently did a, a, a service call at a client's and they were quite far out of town. It was like an hour's drive. And I've never been there before to the to their town, and so all I did is I printed a map, and then I um, I did the street view thing. So I viewed street view, and I moved you know a couple blocks down, and I did the view of what it will look like as I'm approaching. So then I saw oh there's a sports complex on the left, there's this great big dome for a, a sports dome or whatever, mm -hmm. and then immediately after that there's a street, and then there's the company that I just turned in. So as I was approaching then, because I'd already seen it on the screen, I knew exactly where I was going. I didn't feel lost at all. It was it was right there. So really cool stuff. Very and that's awesome. All provided by Google, and it's all provided free of charge. So sweet. If you have any questions for us about basic internet usage, we'd love to hear from you live at category5.tv. If there's something you'd like to learn that we haven't covered here tonight, make sure you email that in to us as well. We'd love to cover it for you. Excellent. If it's basic, I will be on that show. <laughs> <laughs> Got this. All right. All right. So, the news. Here are the top stories from the category5.tv newsroom. Warner Brothers is being sued for the alleged unauthorized use of two cats that have been that have achieved internet fame. Clips of Nyan Cat and Keyboard Cat have each spurred tens of millions of views since appearing online in 2011 and 2007, respectively. The complaint alleged that the cats were used without permission in Scribble Knots, a series of games on the Nintendo DS and other platforms. Fun game. Really? Yes. Neither, neither <laughs> Warner Brothers or Fifth Cell, the game's developer, have commented. Court documents allege that Warner Brothers and Fifth Cell knowingly and intentionally infringed both claimants' ownership rights. Compounding their infringements, the court papers said, defendants have used Nyan Cat and Keyboard Cat and even identifying them by name to promote and market wow. their games, all without plaintiff's permission and without any compensation to the plaintiffs. That kind of stuff blows my mind. Like when a phone manufacturer will take other phone manufacturers' patented things and just use them knowingly. But I figure they figure... Sorry. But truth be told, I mean really honestly how much are they going to have to pay like they're going to make all of this money off of these two cats that's it and then they're just going to so have to pay a worth, tiny little bit isn't it worth the risk if i'm going to make totally. millions and millions and exactly. billions of dollars and somebody wants to sue me for a hundred thousand dollars yeah you kind of whatever it's wow. hard to say i mean i'm not i'm not i get that promoting i'm not endorsing stealing other people's cats but no <laughs> Don't do it, folks. <laughs> Don't do it. But I'm just saying. I mean, it obviously mind. has. We're seeing more and more of this. It's the patent trolls and the people that. And it's do. hard to know, really. I mean, yeah. what if you actually? Well, no. In this case, keyboard cat is probably pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. But but what if you thought you came up with something as well? You know. Right. This Whoops. case is a different story. I don't think it was okay. an accident. No, this was not an accident. Mm -hmm. Samsung phones running secure version of Android have been approved for use by the U.S. Department of Defense. The approval is the start of a process that will see many different types of mobile devo devices used by U.S. soldiers. Approval for other Android devices as well as Apple phones and tablets is expected in late May. Before now, phone maker BlackBerry was the only firm whose products were approved by the U.S. service personnel. Wow, eh? So. That's got to hurt. I got to hurt BlackBerry, yeah. which is Canadian. So Canadian. I love the fact that they're Canadian. Rim. I don't like their devices personally. But, no. Um, I 
literally just got an Android phone. So From what? What were you switching from? An iPhone. So you had an iPhone. Yes. And then you switched to an Android phone? Yes. Awesome. He is <laughs> saluting you. I really, I quite like it. Yeah? I do. Getting used to it? It's, it's a little bit different. It's totally different. So what's better about it than the iPhone? There must be something that stands out to you as being more intuitive or awesomer. Uh, awesomer. Faster. The awesomest part is probably the apps that you can download and the widgets you can use. And that's it's true the too. Widgets. Yeah, you it's don't you don't have the ability to move things around like on uh, iPhone yeah. as you do with Android. And you have like five home pages, so you can be yeah. a little bit chaotic like me and have one organized one, and then a lot of <laughs> that's the one that you show publicly. Chaos. Yes, exactly. Oh, look! I got an Android phone that's so <laughs> and organized. Things and that are completely yeah. off the wall on the other ones. Huh? I really like Android, and I totally approve that the U- the U.S. soldiers they got this going going on. I think what it opens like up it. is that uh, there's going to be not that monopoly. Right. And so I hope that that means that mobile phone manufacturers are going to be putting a heavier um, emphasis on security. Yeah. Wasn't that one of the reasons why BlackBerry was used? Because yeah, it was absolutely. really... Absolutely. Absolutely. Because of the, the enterprise level security that it had and, and the fact that it was military grade. But now with Samsung bringing out a really secure, robust version of Android... Mm-hmm. And actually getting approval now, all of a sudden, okay, well, iOS 6 is next, and who else is going to enter that kind of, you know, it's going to become very competitive, mm-hmm. I think. So it opens up a whole new market for a lot of those companies. Yeah, they must o- they must obviously think that they're quite secure, so mm-hmm. very nice. But Speak. kills BlackBerry. Not like they haven't had problems over the past uh, little yeah. while. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So speaking of cybercrime, mm-hmm. the wow, Dutch government has announced plans to give police far greater powers to fight cybercrime. Under a new bill, investigators would be able to hack into computers, install spyware, read emails, and destroy mm. files. Eeks. They could also break into servers located abroad if they were being used to block services. Critics say that the proposed measures are unnecessary and could set a dangerous precedent for people living under oppressive governments. I think so. I agree wholeheartedly. The government stresses that use of the powers would be subject to the approval of a judge. The bill would also make it a crime for a suspect to refuse to decipher encrypted files during a police investigation. Hmm. It is expected that the draft legislation will be put into Parliament by the end of the year frightening i yeah it's a little big brother for me i i think that where (laughs) it can get so across the line is when like who okay a judge makes the choice but who really is in control now Mm Hmm. i there's something that's just icky about that Mm -hmm. it's like you don't realize what rights have been taken away until they're gone well and if they can hack you that means that they're doing it without your knowledge Mm -hmm. and they can as long as a judge approves it yes so you could be being, somebody could be accessing your files legally, mm-hmm. legally with a judge order. I don't like this one little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, on to some better news. Awesome. After being on Kickstarter for only one day, the Three Doodler 3D printing pen smashed through its funding goal of thirty thousand dollars. On closing their Kickstarter campaign a couple of weeks ago, on closing their Kickstarter campaign a couple of weeks ago, they had raised over 2.3 million dollars. Wow! What likely attracted the attention of over 26,000 backers is the affordability of the 3D printing technology. It's not going to let you print out a house or a case for your phone, but it also won't run you thousands of dollars like a traditional 3D printer. Backers were able to get a three doodler pen and two bags of mixed color plastic for a pledge of only $75. Wow. Not bad. Instead of drawing with ink, the three three doodler uses ABS plastic, the same material used in many other 3D printers. It extrudes the heated plastic and quickly cools, and it quickly cools, solidifying and keeping the shape that you drew in the three-dimensional space. Once you've finished, you've got a 3D plastic model that you've just drew out of thin air or into thin air. We were, we were looking at <laughs> some videos of this actually yeah. in use before the show. And, so. and it, it's kind of like an artsy, like yeah. I could see somebody who's really good at doing, you know, art 
would, <laughs> would think this is pretty neat. Somebody who does sculptures or something, mm-hmm. but really kind of looks like it's a part of that For me, industry. it's, yeah, it needs to be sharper or something. It's not to, it's super cool, not to critique yeah, yeah, how yeah. super awesome cool it is, but it's almost like the plastic needs to be thicker or something so the lines aren't so... Right. Yeah, yeah. you can see that in the in the it screen grab be, there. It's a little bit abstract. It needs to be more substantial or something. But when I mean, when they were <laughs> not to say that it isn't so fabulous. I mean, it's only a so, prototype. I feel like that parent that's like ninety eight percent. What happened to the last two percent? <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh, you just took me back. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, and you. But you could. Do what that. would you do with a three doodler? I mean, it kind of reminds me of like a glue gun type interface for melted plastic i wonder if you get a little bit dizzy from the fumes good point what is mm. abs plastic anyhow is it is like toxic super smells. non-toxic or is it no, smelly gross that, you melt that stuff and but i'm sure they take that into account it's got like a massive cooling fan type thing on the back of it i don't know again cool idea though very cool idea i think it could use this is new it just look it's going to be awesome. Gonna they be, needed $30,000 awesome. to take the prototype and make it go. I'm All so right? mean. They have $2.3 million. Truthfully. Do you think they might say, hmm, maybe we'll refine things a little bit, make it a little bit better? Maybe we'll work on the fact that it kind of drips a little bit, add a little cutting mechanism? I know. I'm sorry. They have two point three million dollars to, to I expect immediate perfection, now. evidently. I am I I love it. I love it. <laughs> Get the full story, it's the like category it's such five. Such a sloppy Eiffel Tower <laughs> made out of three D ABS plastic. Mm. Get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash and Heather Bailey Brown with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story that you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Dermatis. Thanks, Sasha. Tonight's show is brought to you in part by Netflix. Cat5.tv slash Netflix for your free one-month trial. You'll get all the shows that you can watch. And, of course, then you can sign up for just 8 bucks a month. Don't miss out. Cat5.tv slash Netflix. Also, uh, NetTalk. Now with unlimited text messaging, you can eliminate the need for a wireless text plan from your cell phone provider. They can get expensive, but you can upgrade your NetTalk Duo account with the NetTalk text plan. And for the cost of a couple cups of coffee a month, you're going to receive unlimited texting throughout U.S. and Canada. Check out cat5.tv slash phone, and you can start saving money today. Very cool. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to the show. You can find our website at www.category5.tv. Good to have you here. All right. Do we uh, have time for some viewer yeah, let's, questions? Yeah, uh, what do you got for me? I have a question. From <laughs> we literally only have seven <laughs> I know. Minutes, so I will talk we fast. All right. Okay, we'll get one in for All right. sure. Okay, so... She started question. with a long one, it looks like. I had the, the longest one, but pretty much because it's dear to my heart. Okay. Okay, I've got a question from Steve. I just found you guys watched show 222... Oldie but a goodie. Yes. Okay. And he says, hey, Robbie, I thought about back pain, assuming yours is still a problem. Oh, was I talking about back pain? Which likely is not a problem any not longer, problem. but we will get into that. I've been working out. <laughs> yeah. As a welder story, and though. sculptor and having yeah. two desktop Linux boxes in the office, um, as well as a laptop I use to try out new distros on USB, I suffer from Ooh. back, hand, and arm issues due to daily activities. Ah, see, that's what I had. I had uh, ulnar nerve entrapment and so the issues with my hand and my arm and my back not so much a problem anymore funny story how did we meet yes i am a a chiropractic assistant i work at a a a very fabulous and busy chiropractic clinic in barry Mm -hmm. and uh robbie came in to see us help me (laughs) (laughs) and It, it actually works folks yeah, it absolutely, 100%. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. Ask her. Chiropractic. Sasha at Category5.tv. That is correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, now what Steve did is great. Um, so I will what let you Steve know. What did Steve do? His office solution for back issues might mm-hmm. be impractical because of the nature of your injury, 
But he went into his shop and he built a desktop desk. He nice. stands instead of sits, which is oh, great brilliant. because sitting is one of the worst things you can possibly do for your back. Do you see this posture though? You <clears> see that? Mine is really bad when I'm sitting. Just yeah, I was so say, this is, it is really bad. This is surprising. I'm like the logo. I'm the logo <laughs> guy. It holds the monitors, keyboards, and mice about 14 inches above the usual desktop. So keeping his arms. That's and hands fantastic, man. If I had the ability to build that. Yeah. So so that's a great solution, other than chiropractic, but uh, great pre- preventative solution too. Yeah, that's too. it. You've got the restore- Make- restorative. Yeah. And then you've got the preventative. Exactly. So. Make sure that your desk and computer are ergonomically sound so that you can. Yes. My, my workstation at, at my office. Now, here in the studio, we're not overly ergonomic. I mean, our keyboards are just on the desk because we're here literally like two, three hours a week working here. My actual work, I've got a, a split keyboard, like the ergonomic style. We have keyboard. the same. We have two Yeah, we actually keyboards. have the same keyboard. So it's that's, very a, cool. that's a sign. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, my monitors are around me. I've got two or three monitors, and and uh, I use a trackball. I do not use a mouse at at work. Oh. So, um, and that's a TrackMan wireless from Logitech, and and they're really hard to get these days. But yeah. So I do all all that, but I can't stand up at work because I stand up at work. I, I also work for a chiropractor. We have a so. point of sale system <laughs> at the front, and I actually installed um, the ability for me to remote into my computer. So it's on the same desk, but it's up high. So sometimes I'll, if, I, if I really am feeling it in my back, I'll stand up at the point of sale. I'll remote into my computer and I'll continue working standing at the desk. So similar kind of solution. Very, very yeah. cool. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for the email. And thanks for watching. I'm glad that you found uh, Pi Tile on episode 222. Very cool. cool. Um, do we have time for another one? Sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Just go, man. Just okay, go. Okay, okay, Ravi. I loaded a point Linux as suggested, but cannot get Handbrake DVD rip loaded. Any suggestions quickly oh, as to what might be used? Okay, Handbrake. Yes. Administration the- Synaptic Package Manager. Yes. Needs- Enter your password. Okay, here we are in Point Linux, an amazing <laughs> Linux distribution. Love, love, love it. And you can see it on uh, the past episode of Category 5 TV. All right, hand break. Doing a quick search, and we find not available. So we're going to go into our terminal. Uh, Do we want to use terminal with the little time we have? Let's go into repositories, settings, repositories. And what we need to do is we need to actually add the dev multimedia repository. So I don't have that, so obviously I'm not going to have access to hand break or any of the other uh, items that are a part of that repository. So, apt line when we add a new repository, deb, uh, http colon slash slash www.deb-multimedia.org, and then the version of Linux that you're using, which in my case is Wheezy, because uh, this particular version of um, PC Linux, or uh, pardon me, of uh, Point Linux is based on uh, Wheezy version 7 of Debian. So I'm going to type in Wheezy and main. Okay, so that's the line that we need. Deb HTTP colon slash slash www.deb-multimedia.org space Wheezy space main. I'm going to add that source and then I'm going to close that and then I'm going to go reload. Here we go. Now what it's doing is it's actually checking those repositories that I've just added. You'll notice that I get a GPG key uh, error because that is a signed repository, but I have not downloaded the key, so I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. You'll notice my search is still handbrake. It's rebuilding the search index. As soon as that's done rebuilding, we can do another search. There we go, okay, handbrake. There it is, okay? So now we have handbrake available to us. We want handbrake GTK, which is going to install everything that we need, because it's a meta package. Okay, see how it installs a bunch of other stuff? Okay, so we can mark for installation. Now, I told you I would fix the GPG error, so what we're going to actually do a search for is deb-multimedia-keyring. Okay, that's the package we need in order to fix the keyring issue. So also install that at the same time, and then from now on, when you do an apt-get update, you're not going to receive that error message. So then apply your settings, and you'll be good to go. Handbrake will be installed. It'll be working. No need for an alternative. It'll work real well for you. So.
Wow. Sasha. Phew. That's all the time that we have. Wow. Thanks, everybody. Get your questions in live at category5.tv. If I had to cut off the questions tonight, I see that your inbox has got some other questions there, and, and I apologize for that. We will address those for you next week. Category5.tv. Hope you have a great week. Yes. See you. You stick nice for a hangout. Here. I will hangout? stick around for the hangout. She's sticking around for the hangout, Ooh. folks. So get on to cat5.tv slash plus, spelled P-L-U-S. And from there, with your webcam, you can actually interact with us and talk to us about the show, talk to us about life or back pain or whatever you want. We're here for you. So stick around after the show for that uh, if you are on Google+. Plus. All right, everybody. Have a fantastic week, Sasha. Good to see you. Nice to see you all. Well, nice to see you and yeah. everybody here. I know you're there. We know. We can't see you. <laughs> Take care. Have a good week. Okay. Everyone. See Bye. you. Hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local show times in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.